We spoke with Ethan the group this morning. And first offering was simply just to congratulate him, named in the starting side versus Wales. Well done, mate. Ah, uh, thank you very much, and thanks for thanks for having me on here, Ethan. I right, go back to the beginning of the year when there were so many of us who were flying your flag, dude. We wanted you in that All Black squad, and you weren't named for the squad against Ireland. And they said, "Oh, you had to go back and do a few things." Here we are, sitting here now, in your first choice against Wales. Wow. Yeah, it's um, it's been a pretty pretty crazy old road back back into the jersey, but um, no, nah, it's been good. I'm no, nah, it's good when you're playing and. Yeah, no, I'm just stoked that, that I'm back in here, really. I bet you are. Look, so when, you know, how disappointing was it not to be named against Ireland? And, 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 and how did you react and what did it make you feel and do? Um, well, obviously, I was I was pretty pissed off and um, I was pretty gutted and I thought, oh, bugger them and, you know, all those first thoughts. And then, yeah, I sort of just went back and went, went back and had a look at my game and yeah maybe they were right in some things they were sort of saying and I just went <clears throat> went away and just trained really um, went and played some club footy hadn't, hadn't done that in a few years back down in Invercargill and um, yeah started with back with the Stags which was um, pretty cool as well with, back with my old mates there so basically just trained and done as what I was told and yeah it's yeah uh, paying off now. That is such a great answer and such a great reaction too because obviously the initial reaction is disappointment. Why the hell shouldn't it be? But the fact that, you know, you got your head around it and thought, hang on a second, I've got two ways of doing this. I can sulk. I can sulk like a bitch or I can actually get on with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So when you when when they pointed out to you what they wanted you to do, I mean, there was all these things about fitness and that. It was quite confusing. What exactly did they mean? Um... Yeah, well, so I, I was fit as I could run and do the fitness test still good, but they um, they thought around, um, you know, back-to-back efforts around the field, like um, first five metres out of a scrum, how quick you're moving, and, you know, getting off the deck, just, just general gameplay stuff. Um, and that's sort of how I trained. Like, I was doing some pretty diff- different training, I wasn't just, you know, on the line running, you know, running laps. It was more rolling around on the ground or pushing a scrum machine and then getting up and running. That was sort of the sort of the work I was doing. Yeah. That sounds to me, can I call it urgency training? Is it kind of like that? It's like as soon as you do something, get up and go again, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I, during the Super Rugby season, I... I probably had a bit of a habit of sticking my head out of a scrum or after a job I'd done, whether it's a tackle or a clean, and either watching and, and then going, where it's test match footy, you got to you do your job and then you got to go looking for the next one. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I went away and worked on. Ethan DeGroote, all black with us ahead of Wales. It's Sunday morning, people. Ethan on the platform here. And how much faster is Test match rugby? You know, Mex is telling us as well, mate. It just, you know, it, it just seems intangible, but it just seems up another level again. Yeah, um, I found the speed, the speed of the game, like compared to Super Rugby, it's a very, very similar. I find it very similar, but just like there's no room. The difference is there's no room for error, and you have less opportunities to you know uh, break the line or score points and that's that's probably the biggest thing with test test footy and uh, compared to super rugby um, where super rugby is a lot more open and you know there's there's line breaks and there's you know tries getting scored all the time but in test match it's you know one person knocks off and there's your way in or vice versa one of us knocks off and yep. that's their way in and you, you've seen that against Japan last week um yeah, that's test match footy, really. We saw it against Argentina and Christchurch as well. That everyone can make their one-on-one tackles, can't they? That's the thing. You know, you got to be a bit more clever. You got to be, you know, have, have 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 another plan up your sleeve, or maybe go in twos and threes and that. But just that mano on mano thing, the guy's going to knock you down, isn't he? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, is it still as much fun as playing all the other stuff? Just going back to playing with your mates, playing club rugby, and that is it as much fun? Um. Probably the after matches are a bit different compared to club footy, but um, 
no, it's, I love it, eh? It's um, a hell of a challenge. Each each test and each each country, um, you know, they play a different style. And, you know, you can get quite complacent in Super Rugby where you play the same people and you know the people, but, you know, you you just go back to Alice Park, like that was a hell of an occasion. Uh, 90,000 Africans screaming at you, wanting blood. Mm-hmm. Um you know, you might get that down in the south and at the odd club final, but <laughs> maybe not ninety, maybe not ninety thousand of them. Certainly the blood bit, mate. Yeah, but definitely the blood. Yeah, that must have been a hell of an occasion for you. Is that something you dreamed of being over there playing against the box at that place? Um, yeah, that was that was just surreal. Like, um, I just couldn't believe it. So even the bus ride, just getting into the places. You know, extremely hostile. You had uh, people screaming at you, people banging on the bus, and then just not being able to hear a thing on the field. It was just, for us, it was just all instinct and just trusting each other. Um, yeah, even in the hucker, I couldn't even hear um, Aaron Smith leading it. Wow. It was just, you follow the man in front of you. It was yep. yeah, deafening, but no, that's what, that's what dreams are made of for sure. And look, you've got three coming. Hopefully you get to play them all. I mean, Wales and Cardiff will be the same, mate. They sing there. I mean, I don't have to tell you this. I mean, every single person in that place, you could go anywhere. They'd all want to stop and talk to you or, or yell at you about rugby or t- tell tell you how, how you're going to get beaten for the first time. And then, of course, the poms at Twickers, but that's down the track. What, is, well, what does Wales mean to you? Because when I was growing up, they were a real rugby powerhouse. They were a, a, they were a traditional rival. What does being in Cardiff and playing Wales mean to you, mate? Um, I think it's just another opportunity, really. Um, you know, Wales are, um, you know, they're a bunch of big men and they play real direct footy and they actually get around the park pretty good. So, you know, I haven't played for the last ooh, four weeks, so I've definitely blown out a few cobwebs over the last, you know, um, a week in Japan and we've had a good training week so far here in Wales. But for me, it reminds me of Dunedin a wee bit. It's a bit wet, a bit cold, um, and also we're playing under a roof. So, yep. um, yeah, Wales, they're quite up and down with their results they've had over the last few years, but they're definitely a team we, you know, we have to respect. And, um, yeah, I'm yeah looking forward to it. I bet, and, and you know... <clears throat> Playing for the All Blacks when you haven't played for so many weeks, as you say, I mean, does training get you get you up for that? Because we had a lot of rustiness against Japan in that. No game time. Is that a concern? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, the boys that um, weren't playing last week, um, you know, we, yeah, like I said, we blew out a few cobwebs and we've had a, the last two weeks we've been, um, we've been building for this. So, no, nah, all the boys will be ready come Saturday. All right. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Great talking to you, mate. And uh, hopefully we can keep in touch with another couple of tests to come. But go go get them. Good as. Thank you.